there may be an answer to Detroit's problems. Silicon Valley-based Tesla Motors could very easily become the standard of electric vehicle in years to come. Its revolutionary Roadster is the world's first commercially viable, completely electric supercar. Its price tag of roughly $100,000 after a government rebate is modest in comparison to comparable gas vehicles, and its popularity has left the company with several years of back orders. In their constant drive to improve their product line, Tesla has introduced the new Model S, a full-size four-door sedan which seats seven and, like all of their products, is emission-free. It could revolutionize the auto industry and take Tesla from the fringe into the mainstream. The Model S could also do something else. It could provide a lifeline to the embattled Big Three. Tesla got into the auto industry in pursuit of the American dream. Its founders, which include a South African who has adopted the U.S. as his home, wanted to beat the Detroit Giants at their own game. Now it seems like the two groups may need each other more than ever. Tesla cannot com become a viable company if it does not jump into the major market, and at current capacity the Model S will not be able to facilitate that jump by itself. Tesla has the products which Americans want, and when government rebates are included, the products are at a price Americans can afford. But Tesla does not have the means to mass produce their vehicles. Tesla spent $50 million developing the Model S, but their investment dried up when the stock market collapsed and creditors stopped lending. They hoped to produce 20,000 Model S sedans by mid to late 2011, but that may require up to $450 million in government loans to complete their manufacturing facilities. Conversely, the big three have the infrastructure necessary to build and sell vehicles, but they are light years behind Tesla in terms of building the car of the future. Detroit has the factories, they have the showrooms, and Tesla has the technology and the upside. If the government were to encourage a partnership between, for instance, General Motors and Tesla, it could perhaps guarantee the sustained survival of both. As it currently stands, Tesla has partnerships with England's Lotus and Germany's Daimler, and some of its manufacturing is done at the Lotus facilities in England. But the company wants to produce right here in the U.S. Employing American workers would guarantee a customer base for their vehicles. This plan has worked at every other car company in the world. And employing American workers would allow Tesla real access to the largest consumer market the globe has to offer. Tesla needs government loans in order to build their Model S production facilities. And with the profits from the sale of the Model S, they already have plans for a third model, which they hope to release in 2012. Against tough competition and long odds, Tesla has survived to the point that it needs to be taken seriously. As of right now, Chrysler and GM have received billions of dollars in federal loans to simply keep them afloat, but Tesla has yet to receive its relatively paltry request for $450 million. If the, go if the government encouraged one of its bailout recipients to invest in Tesla and organized a profit, technology, and production sharing scheme, as it's currently encouraging between Chrysler and Fiat, it would truly help all the companies involved. A partnership between Tesla and the Big Three would be a fruit no fruitful partnership on many fronts. On one front, it could allow Detroit's automakers to survive and thrive after cornering the market on the next generation of green technology in personal transportation. On a second front, the partnership could allow the vehicles to be produced in even greater quantity, which would drive down the price of each vehicle and re-employ thousands of skilled American auto workers. Finally, by putting millions of Americans behind the wheels of zero-emission, gas-free vehicles, we would seriously reduce America's dependence on foreign oil and lower the trade deficit in one fell swoop. The White House needs to be reminded that not every car company in the United States is a total loss. Instead of pouring good money on top of bad money in Detroit, it should use some to actually create profits and a long-term plan for growth and expansion. On behalf of Concerned Citizens, I'm Craig Harrington. For more on this and other related topics, please log on to economyincrisis.org. Wake up, America. Open up your eyes. Wake up, America. Wake up. Produced by economyincrisis.org.